So I have chain on the from the first axle to the second. Okay? And also from the second axle to the third. Now the chain tensioners aren't on there yet. So I still got to deal with those. Two of those. I also put on the uh, the other sprocket. So got me some of the other videos that used to be a pulley, so I got that out of there. There's the old pulley. There's the sp new sprocket. 30, 38 teeth, I think. If I remember right? I think these are th think these are 38. Anyway, pretty sure they're 38. If you really need to know, watch some of the other videos as I talk about it. Um, and I haven't put on the other. PMA yet because um, I first have to mock up where the chain tensioners are going to go. And I ran into a, a small snafu on this one. Um, the chain tensioners doesn't have a lot of room to fit in there, so I'm first going to see if I can get a smaller chain tensioner sprocket. If I can find one, then I'll use it. If not, I may have to lengthen this chain and approach the chain tensioning a little bit differently on this one, which I don't want to do because it's not it's not ideal. But anyway, there's <clears throat> there's a solution one way or the other. Um, the other thing I wanted to, to show you, if I can, while holding the camera, I may not be able to do this. Should have brought my uh, camera stand down, but I didn't. Uh, hold on one second here. See if I can make this happen. Put a glove on for this. Um, you'll notice if I put my hand on the, the second sprocket here, really easy to turn. Right? Really easy to turn. If I put my hand over here on the th third sprocket, it's even easier to turn. I mean, this is like butter. But of course, the first one, you know, you almost can't even tell it's moving. Here you can tell it's moving a little bit as I turn my hand here. Because I'm just showing the, the whole aspect of gear ratio, right, and leverage. Now, let's remember that this gearbox is a speed increaser. So we're not going to be driving from that side towards this way. We're going to be driving with a chain onto this center sprocket here. It's gonna be a, a 114 tooth sprocket that's not being shown in this video and its chain's gonna drive over onto here, okay? And as it turns this, you know, since it's on the same jack shaft and the axle as this one, it's gonna turn the whole system. Now I want to show you how hard I have to, to, how much, I don't even know if I can turn this by hand, I'm going to try. Yeah, there it goes. I mean, I'm, I'm putting quite a bit of pressure on this just to get it to turn. Probably over 20 pounds. I'm just guessing, but this is about 20 pounds of pressure at least, maybe a little more, just to get this to turn. Look, look at the last sprocket zipping along. So, you know, barely moving that. Now just imagine when I put a chain from there onto the onto that PMA, it's going to be even harder to turn because that PMA probably takes, you know, a pound or two at least to turn it, right? Which I haven't measured that out yet. I gotta, that's something else I got to do. But yeah. Okay, the, the number two sprocket kind of locked up because the chain tensioners aren't on, so I only can do that for so long until something kind of derails a little bit. But anyway, just wanted to show you that. So now you can begin to understand why it, it take over 450 pounds to, to drive this first sprocket here. You know, um, to get the right amount of torque, speed and torque, all the way through the gearbox to the PMA. So I'm still not thoroughly convinced that it'll be doable, but 
we'll find out uh, once all this is done. So I just want to run the video for you guys and and then you can uh, follow along. Okay, video's getting long, so I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for hanging with me.